church, he had a large congregation of people that he was speaking to, mainly Jews. He starts off in verse 1, he tells them to judge not that ye be not judged. So he, he didn't just say judge not. A lot of people just say judge not. But it's a comma right there. And he said that ye be not judged. Meaning that if you're going to put yourself in a position of judging someone else, you're going to be judged. Yeah, he didn't tell you not to judge. But he said, make sure you have yourself. Right. But we still have to find a positive way. To give him the praise, the glory, and the honor, which he so rightfully deserved. I do thank God, praise the Lord, for Apostle Phelps. I thank God, praise the Lord, for all of our TV people, Facebook, YouTube. I thank God for all of you. And I thank God for each and every one of you that support the ministry. I want you to know we appreciate all your letters, all your cards, all your donations. Everything that you're doing is highly appreciated. And it's all to the glory of God. And I just give him the praise and the thanks for using us. Because he could use somebody else. I do thank God for our pastors, uh, assistant pastors. I thank God for the minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I thank God for our missionaries, our chairman deacon and our deacons. And, and I thank God for our... Our ministers praise the Lord of the gospel everywhere. Because we need all of the people that we can get to be talking about Jesus. It's time for people to get saved. That's the most important thing that you can receive in this life is salvation. Again, I thank God for what he's doing. I thank God for the Pentecostal revival hour. I thank God for all of our closed capture people. I really appreciate what you all are doing because that's a, that's a great job that you're doing, getting our closed capture done so we can get these tapes uh, made and get them out. And thank God for Pastor Phelps because he worked hard on them. And I thank God for all our, all our song leaders and all of the songs that go up before the Lord. And I'm just so appreciative for what God is doing. And uh, we're going into the month of December. We're still open. All that comes from the Lord. He's keeping us open. We know that we still have a lot of viruses that is out. Every time one get you think under control, here come another one. But I still want y'all to be safe. You know, don't just get where you're going to do like other folk do. You do what you're supposed to do. You wear your masks and, and uh, you know, do what you're supposed to do. Again, we just thank God for all of the services, all our Bible studies, all our Sunday school that we are doing on Zoom. Uh, we just thank God, praise the Lord, for, praise the Lord, our Sunday evening service, our Saturday service. Uh, I had some of the people calling me about the Pentecostal Revival Live that come on at 5 o'clock on Saturday. I thank God, praise the Lord, we got people that are still uh, listening to it. One of the ladies that called me, she says that she listens to us every Saturday. And she says she get good food. So I thank God for that. And again, I thank God for each and every one of you that came out to the house of worship this morning. We want to keep God out front all the year, not just this December. But January, February, all, every month, every day, we ought to be lifting up the name of Jesus. Because he's worthy to be praised. Now, I don't, know, I don't know about you all, but I love to praise the Lord. I love to lift him up. I love to give him thanks. I love to give him the glory because what he done for me. Is we sang the song, look what the Lord has done. 
People, God had done what he said he'll do. I thank God he saved me. I thank God he saved you. And for that, I said, thank you, Jesus. And I give him all the praise, glory, and honor. And I'm not going to be long the time because I get excited when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all he done for me. My soul cries out, hallelujah. I thank God for saving me. I'm going to get ready and go on into our devotional service. Sister Pastor Walter is coming at this time. And as he comes, let's give God a hand of praise. Thank him, thank him, thank him. Just keep on praising the Lord. For oh, he is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let us all stand. Let's bow our head in prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand of praise. <laughs> praise God. Just want to thank God for this opportunity to come before you all this morning. And y'all know that we... We do this each and every Sunday, come before the Lord and give him praises. And not only that, we do it seven days a week, 24 hours a day. And uh, we're striving to reach this goal. We're striving to reach heaven. But y'all know we can only imagine. We can only imagine what it's going to be like when we get on the other side. Praise the Lord. I can only imagine. Will we be able to, to go before him in words or will we be able to speak it all? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I can only imagine what it would be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me I can only imagine surrounded by your glory what will my heart feel will I dance for you Jesus or in all you be still Will I stand in your presence Or to my knee will I fall Will I sing hallelujah Will I be able to speak it all I can only imagine I can only imagine I can only imagine when that day he comes and I find myself standing in the sun, I can only imagine when all I'll do is forever, forever worship you. I can only imagine, yeah. I can only imagine. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dare for you, Jesus? Or in all you be still? Will I stand in your presence? Or to my knee will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak it all? I can only imagine. I can only imagine Surrounded by your glory What will my heart feel Will I death for you, Jesus Or will all you be still Will I stand in your presence To my knee will I fall
I can only imagine when all I'll do is forever, forever worship you. I can only imagine. Yes, we all can only imagine what it's going to be like when we reach heaven gate. Praise the Lord. I tell you, God is good, y'all. No matter what the situation is, God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. I said, God is good, saints. All the time. And all the time, God is good. Do y'all believe that this morning? God is good all the time. He put this song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good if you all the time. Through the darkest night, oh, his light will shine. God is good. God is good. Oh.
as he comes. Praise the Lord. Let's give the Lord another hand. Amen. He's worthy to be praised. Let this psalm go ahead. Ask everyone to get your Bibles. Hold them up. Repeat after me. This is my Bible. I am what it says that I am. I believe what it says to believe. I come to the Lizella Pentecostal Church to be taught the Word of God. I will not serve the devil. I will not live in sin. Jesus Christ died for my sins. And the blood of Jesus cleanses me from all sin. I am Christ-like. I am born again. I have power over the devil. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen once again. Let's give the Lord one more hand of praise. Hallelujah. Ah, oh, yes. If you will, just bow your heads right where you are. Dear Heavenly Father, we give you glory, honor, praise, and worship. We thank you for giving us another blessed week. We thank you for allowing us another opportunity to enter into your house of worship, into your courts of praise. And Lord, we pray as we go into your word there be a word of salvation to the lost, a word of comfort, a word of consolation to those who are saved. Lord, we pray that yokes are destroyed in people's lives as we go forth. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give him one more praise. Amen. Oh, yes, you may be seated. Again, we welcome everyone out this morning. We hope and pray that everyone had a blessed week as we are once again allowed to come together in Jesus' name. I do want to welcome everyone out to our service this morning. To God be the glory for the things that he has done. We thank those of you who are watching our television broadcast. Those of you who are listening or watching by YouTube. Also, those of you who are watching by Facebook Live, I want to welcome you to the Lazella Pentecostal Church. It is our goal to magnify Jesus. It's not about this church, this ministry, not about myself, nor seeing Pastor Phelps, but it's all about the Lord being manifested. Hopefully, this ministry has shown you something for you to realize that you need the Lord to be in your life. And it's something that we have to give up in order to make it into the kingdom of God. There are some things that we have to give up. And before I go into the word, I do want to give information about uh, our ministry. Once again, this is the Lizella Pentecostal Church. Our physical church location is 7545 Knoxville Road in Lazella, Georgia, and everyone is invited and welcome to come and be a part of our services. Currently, we only have one service every Sunday morning at 11 a.m., and we are being safe in our service. We're doing what we need to do in order to protect ourselves and also to protect our sisters and brothers. So we ask that if you do decide to come visit or to be in our service, that you recognize those protocols that have been set forth. Uh, we do require face coverings in our services and we do uh, social distance. If you notice on our side shot, especially on our television, we all spread out all everywhere. Some are even up in the balcony. And then we do that again to protect, the, protect ourselves and also our sisters and brothers. And so far, the Lord has blessed us and allowed us to be safe. 
I do want to give you the mailing address is 7697 Knoxville Road, Lizella, Georgia. And we thank those of you who are writing the ministry, those of you who are contributing, contributing to the ministry. We thank you for everything that you're doing to help support this ministry in going forth as far as television ministry is concerned. Very expensive, but we thank God for him allowing us, him being the one main supporter of this ministry and allowing us to have the funds that we need in order to keep this ministry going. This is something that Apostle felt started out many years ago. And the Lord has sustained him during his ministry, his time here on earth. And he is continuing to sustain us today. And we thank those of you who are assisting in continuing on in this message of faith and power. I do want to give you uh, a little bit more information. Uh, here lately, we've been having many people all over the United States tune into our Zoom services. Those services are available for everyone who desires to attend. We have our Zoom meetings. We have Bible study on Mondays and Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. And if you desire to join us in our Bible studies, the meeting ID for Zoom is 296-151-7600. Once again, it's 296-151-7611. And the passcode is 399-261. Once again, it's 399-261. And we also encourage those of you who are not in your Sunday schools on Sunday mornings to tune in to our Zoom service on, on Sunday mornings. We have Sunday school at 9 a.m. Eastern, Eastern time. So if you're not in your ministry and you desire to be in a good Sunday school, you can join us with our Zoom meetings. So again, we just thank God for those of you who are uh, coming to our services on Zoom and hopefully something is being said that will be a blessing unto you and your family. All right, so now we're going to get ready and go on into our word for this evening the word is going to be coming from saint matthew chapter 7 Amen. and i'm going to start reading with verse 1 and our title for our message for today is check yourself check yourself It is quite easy for man, and I'm talking about humanity, to look down on others. It's quite easy for us to elevate ourselves into thinking that we are higher more than others. But Jesus, in this message, and this message is the third chapter of the Beatitudes. This is Jesus' longest message that he delivered unto the people. It, it, it covered three chapters. Started in the fifth chapter. Went on into the sixth chapter. And as he got into this seventh chapter, he began to deal with people on an individual basis. And it's something that as we go into our reading, this is something that we all have to do for ourselves. Because it's easy for us to look at others and see what's wrong. And we haven't checked ourselves. So as we go into the first verse of St. Matthew chapter 7, this is Jesus speaking. It reads, judge not that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. 
and with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. So again, this, this message, he had a large congregation of people that he was speaking to, mainly Jews. He starts off in verse 1, he tells them to judge not that ye be not judged. So he, he didn't just say judge not. A lot of people just say judge not. But it's a comma right there. And he said that ye be not judged. Meaning that if you're going to put yourself in a position of judging someone else, you're going to be judged. Yeah, he didn't tell you not to judge. But he said, make sure you have yourself. Right. Before you go out and condemn someone else. Amen. He further explains it in, in verse 2. For what, for with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. So whatever judgment you pronounce over somebody else, you're going to be judged by that same judgment. Then he says, and with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. So whatever you dish out, you're going to have to take. If you can't take it, don't dish it out. So this is, this is basically what Jesus was telling the congregation then. He's also telling us today. Then he goes on to say in verse 3, And why beholdest thou the moat that is in thy brother's eye, but considereth not the beam that is in thine own eye. Amen. Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the moat of, out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye. Right. Thou hypocrite, First cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the moat out of thy brother's eye. Amen. So again, Jesus is giving an, an, something to think about. He's saying, why beholdest thou the moat that is in thy brother's eye. Going back to that third verse. Notice that uh, at the end of behold, he has an EST. Very, con very similar to the ETH that we see in other writings. Meaning the same thing. Meaning that you keep on looking at it. You see that your brother has a moat in their eye and you keep on dwelling on it. Your brother may have a problem or an issue that they're dealing with and you see it and you keep on dwelling on that issue that your brother may have. Then he say, but considering not the beam that is in thine own eye, Another thing, a moat is something that's very small. Like a splinter. Many times with a splinter, you can't see it, but you can feel it. But it's there. So you see that your brother has a little small thing that you may not consider to be right. But you have a big old beam. Beam something big, huge. This building is supported by beams. Has some steel beams in it. Those beams are huge. They're heavy. 
But in like manner, a person, uh, you may have a big bean, something that's major. But you so busy looking at that moat. And you keep on dwelling on it. You behold this it. That moat that's in your brother's eye. But you don't even consider that, that, that being that is in thine eye. Verse 4 says, Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out the moat out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye. So how are you going to go to that brother? I'm going to help you. Get that little speck out of your eye. And you have a beam in your own eye. I don't believe any of us in here would want a blind doctor committing surgery, performing surgery on us. If the doctor going to do some surgery on us, we have to know, trust, and believe that he can see. But we have so many. I'm talking about church folk, not church, church folk. We got to work on ourselves. We have to check ourselves. See, do we have a big beam in our own eye before we try to work on our brother? Then the field verse said, Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the moat out of thy brother's eye. Right. So he, he telling the people, calling them, because he knows that he's dealing with Sadducees and Pharisees and scribes. And they were very judgmental in Jesus' day. So he telling them, you're a hypocrite. First, you got to get the beam out your own eye. Then you can see clearly how to operate on someone else's eye. How to get that moat out of thy brother's eye. Amen. Many times those of us who are in households or is more than just us, if we get a splinter or something in our hand or we get a speck of dust or hair in our eye, we call for our spouse. Come and see if you can get this out my eye. I got a hair in my eye. Because many times we can't, we, 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 if we try to get it out ourselves, we struggle. But if we have a spouse who's there in the house, they can see clearly. And they are able to come and to assist us in getting that hair or whatever trash or stubble or whatever it is that may be in our eye. Right, right. So in like manner, we got to have somebody who, who, somebody who was trying to correct us got to be better. Yeah. Yeah. They got to have their life title. In order to really help us. This is the message that Jesus is telling the people. Then he goes to verse 6. Say, give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Neither cast ye your pearls before swine. Lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. So now here, uh, Jesus is continuing 
in this message, and he t says, Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, that which has been dedicated unto the Lord. Don't give it to the dogs. Dog don't care nothing about it. He said, Neither cast ye your pearls before swine. I don't think any of us, some of you ladies in here may have pearls. May have some genuine, real pearls. And I don't think you would just go out there and just throw those pearls to the hogs. Hogs don't know no better. Hogs will eat them up. You know, hogs eat just about anything. Dead or alive. And then, not only will they do that, they trample them under their feet, then turn again and come at you. Some dogs do the same thing. I know one time we had a dog, Apostle and Senior Pastor and myself. And when I was growing up, we had a, a dog. And as that dog got older, he began to change. He began to growl. You can have his food getting ready to take it out to, to defeat him. And he started growling at the folk bringing him the food. And the older he got, the worse he got. He didn't like Missionary Coleman at all. And she lived next door, so he, he couldn't help but see her. But it came to a point in time to we had to deal with that dog. Because he was going to hurt somebody. And so, so, so just let, let us know that you, you can be good, too. You, you know, like that food, I can see that being holy. But you giving that, you know, that good food to that dog and then he growling at you. How you scared to feed him? You had to put the food down and run. <laughs> Don't approach him when he eat neither, boy. But I'm just giving you some natural ex examples of, 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 of that and in like manner with people the same way. If you got something holy, don't give it to them. I'm talking about to the dogs now. I ain't talking about, you know, good people. Then he said, verse 7, he says, Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Look at this word that Jesus is saying here. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be open unto you. I just had this experience the other day. I had placed an order and I had to go to the place to pick the order up. And when I got there, the order wasn't ready yet, so I had to wait. And right outside the door of this business, there was a pantry, food pantry, about the size of Coca-Cola machine. And it had canned goods in there, had rice, packages of rice, packages of dried beans. And if it had a sign up there that said, if anybody wants to get anything out, you can get it. It was unlocked. And it had a glass, glass door on it. And Right next to 
the business that I was at was a convenience store. And the Lord just told me, just sit there and watch for a minute. I went, I began to look, and I began to see people go in and out of the convenience store. They were coming out with potato chips and sodas. Some were coming out with beer. And going into the convenience store, you got to pay. But here over here in the food pantry, all good, nutritious food, many vegetables, all kind of canned goods and vegetables. I didn't see anyone go to the food pantry and get anything out. But they'd rather go into the convenience store. I'm talking about right next door. And get junk. Then they go to the food pantry. I mean, the food pantry was stopped. I don't know if it was sponsored by a church or, or who uh, was over it. It just, just said, if you want to get something, feel free. Get whatever you want. It also said, if you want to leave something, you can do that also. But it was, it was stopped. But people would rather go to the convenience store. And, and the thing is, all you had to do if you wanted to get something out of the food pantry would get it. You got, but you got to get up out of your vehicle, go up to the door, and get it. It's not going to come and fly out. It's not going to come fly out. into your vehicle. And I begin to think about that thing. I begin to compare that food pantry to the church. Many of our churches, it's convenient for people. Go and get something you need. Go get something that's nutritious for your soul. Yeah. All you got to do is get out, go to the place and get out your car and go in. Right. And you can get what you want. But people would rather go to the clubs, go to the entertainment venues, Go to the sporting events where it's going to cost money and you're not going to get anything in return of value. Lord showed me that. They'd rather go and pay. You can't even go to a concert. I'm talking about a worldly concert today. I'm on a $50. That's cheap. $50 a ticket. Don't let it be a name brand store. You're going to pay $100, $200, 500 to go to their entertainment event. Like I, I, like I said last week, I, I enjoy sports. My team played on yesterday. But I wasn't going to buy a ticket. Because those tickets were like seven, eight hundred, start night. I'm talking about you way up at the top. Coming on down to the bottom, people paying thousands. 
For one ticket. And if you look at it on TV, it was sold out. Yeah. But I'm just saying, people would rather go and pay big money for junk. And then you have something right next to it that's more value, more worth to you, more, more nutritious for you. You didn't have to pay anything for it. All I got to do is go up to the door and open it up and get it out. I was there for about 10 or 15 minutes, and I, I didn't see anyone go, in that, go to that pantry. But I saw a lot of people go in the convenience store. And so that kind of relates to that ask and it shall be given you. Because the thing that Jesus requires of us is not hard. Say, seeking ye shall find, knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Then he say, for everyone that asketh, receiveth. And he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. So if you come to the Lord right, whatever you want from the Lord, if it's in his will, now you can't come asking for some crazy, sinful stuff. If you have a right relationship with the Lord, He'll give you your heart's desire. But you have to be right. You got to get all, all them beams out your eye. So this, this is just some, something that, that, you know, the Lord placed in my spirit again. Asking it shall be given, you seek, you shall find. Knocking it shall be opened unto you. Three things. Ask. Seek. Now, whenever you're seeking something, you know, many people get seeking mixed up with looking. Because whenever you you looking, you, you just, you know, you make just glance. And if you don't see it right off, well, I can't find it. But whenever you begin to seek, you want to flip over some pillows, pull some sheets, Get upside, upside down, look up under the bed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're not satisfied till you find what you are seeking for. Many times you may tell your children or ask your children to go look for this for you. About 10 seconds later, I don't see it. I can't find it. Especially if they were doing something they, you know, yeah, something they wanted to do. And it's going to cause them to have to stop doing what they're doing to go look for it. They go and I say, they, they look about 10 seconds. Dad, I don't see it. Did you look? You know, seek is a word we don't hardly use in today's time. But I'm just trying to show you the difference between looking and seeking. Seeking is, is again, you're not satisfied till you find whatever it is that you lost. Lose your keys. It's going to be some seeking going on. Seek ye first. Where my keys at? Flipping some sofas. Because you know those keys are, are the power. Right. Keys is the power to your house. Right. Keys are the power. Well, not today, time. If you get, well, you still got to have the fog. Even if you don't have the key. A lot of, a lot of cars they're making now don't, don't have a key. They get in and push the button. But you got to have the fog. 
So again, again, this is what the Lord is telling us. We, if we seek him, we're going to find him. If we knock, he's going to open the door. But you got to knock. Then he goes to verse 9 and says, Or what man is there of you whom if his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? I don't believe there's any one of us. Especially during this season. Our children most likely going to be coming asking us for some things. And if they have been good children to us, we don't mind even making sacrifices. Some things we may desire for ourselves. But we will sacrifice and get them what they want. Just like this man here. If your son come and ask bread, are you going to give him a rock? No. Are you going to give him a stone? No. Or if he asks a fish, Will he give him a serpent? Child come ask you, Dad, I want a piece of fish. You gonna give him a snake? No, we wouldn't do that. Verse 11 says, If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? So, we humans, generally we are evil. We're self-centered. But when it comes to our children, whether you saved or unsaved, you have a feeling about your children. And we know how to give good gifts. Now we know how to do that for our children. Imagine if you are a child of God. One thing that I hear a lot of people say, now we all God children. The Bible doesn't support that. Jesus had an inter interaction with some people. And he told them, you are of your father, the devil. You do the same deeds that he did. There's some people that's alive today. The devil is their father. If you are a child of God, you're going to have his attributes and his features. Just like all of our natural children. All our natural children have our features and our attributes. Sometimes we can look at people, they have children, man have a son. You can tell that's that man's son. Because he look like it. Not only features, but it weighs. Some, some parents have some crazy ways. And the children come, come up having the same crazy ways. Yeah. It, See, and if God is our father, we got to have his attributes. We got to have his ways. I know most of you in here have seen the movie Forrest Gump. And Forrest didn't know he had a son. But he found out that he had one. And when I was looking at the movie, and, and, and I think the lady name was Jenny, began to tell Far he had a son. I said, ain't no way. Knowing Jenny. Because Jenny was kind of streetly. 
And far as he kind of humble. People would consider him being slow. I said, ain't no way. That's far, son. Because Jenny done been with a whole lot of folk. That's what I said. But then on in the movie, when Forrest went and met his son, and they began to look at TV, they were sitting side by side. And when Forrest began to look at TV, he turned his head a certain way. And then I saw that little boy turn his head the same way. That far turned his head. That's your son, Forrest. Because he's just like you. Forrest didn't te teach and tell him, well, you know when you look at TV, you got to turn your head to the side. He didn't do that. It was something in him. Just like when we become children of God, it's something in us. Some things that we used to do when the devil was our father, we had his attributes and his ways. But when we got saved, we got on the Lord's side. The Lord became our father. And now we begin to take on his attributes and his ways. We're transformed by the renewing of our mind. So that's just some, some, something, again, my message is, is not to entertain you. That's not my goal. My goal is to get you to think about Jesus. About you being the Lord and the Savior. If you want a hoop and a holler, it's not coming from me. As I said, I'm not here to entertain you. Many preachers are entertainers. They're here to excite the people. Have them jumping up. Yeah, Rev, you sure preach, Rev. Don't even know what Rev said. All Rev had was a tune. Ooh, ha, ha, ha. And Reb hasn't said anything that will cause you to think, cause you to make changes, cause for you to have a desire to change. And so who in a heart ain't, ain't going to say nobody? Who in heart ain't in the Bible? I see where Jesus spoke to the people. And I don't believe he spoke with a tune. He talked to him. He told him. Made him think. This word right here that we read this morning, it should make you think. Make you think to check yourself. Am I one out here being judgmental of others? Am I one that, like Minister Penniman preached on last week, that got saved in over a period of time, just forgot all that stuff I did? <laughs> a lot of folk get saved, but they, over a period of time, but they forget. They forget what they did. But the thing is, most of the stuff we did, I'm talking about when we was in the world, we didn't do it alone. And there's some people that we did some things with, they know what you did. So, folks, that's why I, I say in my testimony, I'm not ashamed of it. Because I know somebody out there know anyway. So I may as well go on and tell it. Talk about how God delivered me. Where he brought me from. Can't need, need me trying to suppress it. Because somebody know it anyway. 
And me trying to hold it back. My sin, hold it back. I ain't going to tell nobody that. So again, I hope everybody got something out of our word this morning. Again, we, get, we have to check ourselves. Over a period of time, here once in a while, we have to do a self-evaluation. Ask the Lord, Lord, is there anything that I, I need to do to make my relationship better with you? Sometimes we can't see it. Sometimes it's like a moat, just like that, that, that moat that was in that brother's eye that they couldn't see that they had. But with the help of the Lord, get that moat out. Or even a beam. That's the Lord helped you get that beam out your eye. So you can see clearly how to get that moat out your brother's eye. Again, we thank God for everybody coming out to our service this morning.